was waiting to see if my banners are actually rotating. I can't tell. Because every time I look up at my OBS, it's just Gospel Mark. I'm like, I have more banners than that. So, anyway, I can probably deal with that later. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, my name is Joseph Louthan, and uh, this is the study. This is uh romans we're still in chapter one we're a few weeks in i hope you guys are doing super great uh before we even get started let me pray father god um everything that we know about you uh through the scriptures it comes from you um that 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 revelation is not a uh an intellectual uh, ascent is not a something if we study really hard, try really, really hard, work really hard, we're going to get God. Uh, it's literally if we ask for God, you will give us yourself. And you've done so by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to live and die for us. And you send your spirit to open our eyes, to renew our minds, to give us actual life and eternal life. If we come to, if we know and to come, uh, trust you and obey your son. Um, so Lord, help us, guide us um, in this moment. And would you open our eyes now? And would you give us your gift of yourself now? Would you give us your heart now? And we love you so much. In your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, uh, I had some announcements. Uh, let me think about this. Oh, well, okay, they're about other, uh, about the meditations of, and the pastoral and the pastorals. Um, I guess I, I can talk about it now and I'll talk about it a little bit in depth on Wednesday. Uh, what I've been mulling over what does meditations mean? And it's not, I'm not very introspective. I'm not a very like, like think about how do I feel about that? I really don't care. Uh, but what is what, what that series end up being is, uh, more so than philosophy of ministry, which I think is very important, but what it really ended up being was, Here's how to preach the gospel to yourself. So uh, if you want to know how to do that, come along uh, for meditations in the pastoral epistles. That's every Wednesday at 5 o'clock uh, Central, 5 p.m. Central. And of course, we have family devotions in Mark. Where we walk through the gospel of Mark and how to present that to your household, to your home. Um, should be a fun time. All right, here we go. And I am getting... Dinged. I'm getting dinged left and right. So let me go ahead and shut this sucker down. You're probably not going to see this on my screen. You probably just see the little flashes, but I'm going to close this Chrome out. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. <clears throat> Today we, oh, I actually don't know. <clears throat> I actually had this planned out and I don't know. I want to make sure we're staying on course here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. Here we go. Uh, we're we. So here's Romans thus far. Uh, let me go back real quick. So we were we we talked about uh, here's the introduction just to what we're doing here uh, a little few resources we have Romans one one which we talk about Paul uh, we talk about his conversion and wh what is what does that say the conversion the salvation of Paul what does that say to us about God and more so what does that say to uh, uh, to us about God for us. Um, and again, if you miss any of these episodes, like, oh my gosh, we were started, but I missed a few episodes. That's okay. Check us out. YouTube.theologic.us. And if you go here, like here's the YouTube link. Easy peasy. Yeah, there's the YouTube link. So, you know, you got to the right place. It's just going to say my name. I just kept it simple. Um, also... If you're into this sort of thing, I'm trying to get people into um, Discord. Oh, here's the Discord symbol right here. Oh, you can't see my mouse. 
but it's discord.theologic.us. Uh, if you're invited to the, uh, just click on that. That's an invite. That's a, a, a standing for, forever invite. You get in there, you chat, um, talk about the, the Bible studies. If you have any questions, you missed a live chat. Uh, the Discord, I feel like, is a really good place to ask questions. But anywhere, if you see it, if you look at it on YouTube, ask questions there. I'll respond there. If you're on Discord, ask us, uh, ask questions there. I'm always in Discord 24-7. So if you ask a question, well, except when I'm sleeping. Uh, if you ask questions, just ask it there. So, uh, And you're not going to miss anything. All this is recorded. Also, last but not least, I'm also taking the audio from this and just posting it on YouTube. I uh, have some uh, uh, um, some bumper music ending beginning, so it's a little bit fancier than the live stream. Uh, and we just uh, yeah, so like if whatever is convenient for you, there you go. So we're gonna do uh, today. Oh, and then we talked about in Romans one seven. Uh, we just walked through the the first seven verses. Um, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set a part for the gospel of God and walk through and to and see where God was and what does the scriptures in that passage say about God and today will be no different uh we're going to do Romans 8 through 12 now if you're familiar with Romans and if you are like I love Romans I read Romans all the time and in your your you're in chapter one and we're going passage by passage. And sometimes it's going to be verse by verse. I ain't going to lie. It's going to be like, there's going to be some sessions where we just do one verse. Just that it is what it is. Um, but uh, we're going to walk through. And you know, if you, I want to get you hyped about this. If you know we're approaching Romans 16, 1, 16 and 17, which is, the the amazing good news, but also you know what's going to come up in verses eighteen through thirty two, and I'm not going to back off of that. So um, uh, there's controversy there. A lot of uh, the world will try to tell us uh, in those passages, especially that those don't mean what they actually say, and I'm going to be like, well, what is what is this? What are the what does the Bible say about that? Uh, we can we can throw in commentaries, other teachers, teachers that you like, pastors that you like, preachers you like, and get their two cents on that. But I'm going to go turn to the scriptures and say, you know what? The scriptures say this about this, what, and this is where we're going to land. Um, and again, the, the thing that I've always said from the very beginning, if you, if, excuse me, if, if I, in my little minute little bit, P-sized brain. Uh, if if I if something's a mystery and I can't figure it out, I'm just gonna say I don't know. So, uh, if there is anything in those future passages or anything that you've ever heard on this, uh, I'm not gonna like dance around it. I'm not gonna talk around it. If I don't feel confident in like telling you what that is, and I know for sure, I mean, I could throw some theories out there, but I'm even trying to be careful in that. Uh, I'm just really going to see what, what the Holy Spirit reveals to us. And uh, how does that... And again, going back to the format, what does the passage say about God? Where's the gospel in that? And what is ours to do? So, uh, in this text, we're going to do Romans 1, uh, starting at verse 8. First, first and foremost, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because the news of your faith is being reported in all the world. God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in telling the good news about his son, that I constantly mention you, always asking in my prayers, that, is, that if it is somehow in God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I want very much to see you, so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, to be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. So here is the support. The support I'm going to lay out there for this text is the Great Commission that's not just been placed on pastors, not just been placed on your favorite Bible teachers, not just placed on those people who uh, are are uh, pro-level, varsity, how many more sports rooms are going to hear, uh, upper-tier, 
uh, Christians. No, if you have decided to follow Jesus, you are a Christian. If you are a Christian, therefore you are a disciple. And they're like, I'm so encouraged by my pastor's preaching of Mark chapter one, uh, just yesterday. And the, the distinction that we have, like the, the baggage that the word Christian and the title Christian comes with in our, in our country versus the title of disciple of Christ, um, with being a disciple of Christ, that means you literally will lay down your life and go and follow Christ. Um, so in that said, Christ has commissioned every one of his followers, those who believe, trust, and obey him, uh, to go and proclaim the gospel to every creature throughout the ends of the earth. That's Mark 16. Um, I want to simplify all those chapters. I'm going to simplify all of that. And I'm going to, I'm going to say it this way. This is in the NIV and this is in the NIV and it is, uh, because we love you so much, we were delighted to share with you, not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. So, uh, give me one second. This is what I kind of like about I kind of like about um uh, this is about the live stream is that there's no fancy editing. Uh, I had to check on something there, but I'm not going to interrupt it. I'm not going to cut it out. I'm just going to leave it there. And it just is what it is. Okay. So back to what we were saying. Um, back to what, it, what I was saying. First Thessalonians 2 8. It's a, and some translations have, I put a B there just for like uh, emphasis, kind of like it's like maybe some incomplete sentences. But here, here's the NIV uh, translation of that. Because. We loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. And so this, this I think, sums up, should rightly sum up the Great Commission. I think this is the full support for what Paul is writing here to Romans. Now, all I said, let's get to it. Um what 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 does this passage actually say about God? Well, first and foremost, God is worthy of all our praise in Thanksgiving. So he says in his um in the first in the in I think verse eight, first I thank God my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because of the news of your faith is being reported in the world. And you're like um, if you come from a Christian background, you come from a church background where the assumption or the culture um, uh, that is that your faith was something that you had to drum up, you had to stir up, and you had to increase and get started for you to actually believe in God. Well, let me, and I hope this comes as really, really good news. Uh, that faith doesn't come from you. Okay, uh, for you to believe in God, you you first will have to have a brand new heart. That heart comes from God. It's his own heart. When you receive that heart from him, your, your heart then is turned towards God. And your desires are for him and less for the other things in this world. Is that going to be perfect? Absolutely not. That's why that's why Romans 12 talks about renewing of the mind. It's it's your your mind is being changed as we speak. You're going to choose to live differently the moment you did before. And again, I'm not and I said this on other uh, teachings. I'm in 1st Timothy, I'm in, in the Gospel of Mark, uh, but the Bible is going to keep beating that drum over and over again. If 
what I'm saying this it, with your proclamation of your mouth, like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I believe in that. I believe in that. Uh, Let me ask you this. When you believe, did your life change? Did you like completely, like totally change your life? So in all that, I did stop the recording, but the stream did not stop. So anyway, we're going to keep going because here's the thing. I'm in, uh, in where I'm recording this. The unfortunate thing about this camera, this camera angle is that my bathroom is right there and that's my wife. And so, yeah, it is what it is. So, uh, I no longer have a dedicated office to do all this stuff. Uh, it kind of drawn back to curtain. This is like off topic, but drawn back to curtain a little bit. My oldest son, uh, 19 years old, uh, starting college, he actually moved into our home and, uh, that is God be praised right there. So, um, if you're in Norman and, uh, you see him around, he kind of looks like me, but kind of doesn't. And, uh, and, uh, just say hi to him. Uh, you'll see when you see him, you're like, oh yeah, that's Joe's son. Uh, he, but he has a big Afro and he's kind of tall. So, I mean, I say tall, he's like six two. So that's pretty tall for a lot of people. Anyway. Uh, so that's, that's the reason why I'm like, why am I in this little bitty, you know, I live in Oklahoma but my, it seems like I'm in like a really tight cramped corner. Well, I'm doing this for my bedroom. So, so anyway, that's my bathroom. I'll try to always keep that door shut. Anyway, here we go. Um, so going back to what I was saying, the news of your faith is being reported in all the world. Well, that faith does not come from you. It is a gift of, from God. God gives you a new heart that brings up that, that, that gives you the actual ability to believe and trust in God. That doesn't come from your own power. And thank God, like we we can you can you can read the Bible, and and be like, oh, there's just a bunch of rules we have to follow. Let me try my very best. Oh, there's some of these laws are really really easy. I can knock those out, no problem. But these other laws, these other rules that God has, those are really hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and ignore them. Well. That's that's how you obey God in your own strength. How do you think that's going to work out? And when God demands perfection and holiness and righteousness and the actual terminology and what those words actually mean, and that's what I'm trying to use them as, um, that is how's that going to? If He demands those things and you're going to pick and choose what you want to do and not do for God, how is that going to work out for you? The truth of the matter is, is that God's going to give you a new heart. He has given you a new heart. Uh, therefore you get, to, you have the ability to believe and trust in him. And then I think a lot of people who want to like debate theology and doctrine, it's like, well, then that means you can choose either way. And I'm like, I don't think that's how that works. Uh, I think that once you, once you have the spirit of God in you, is it, are you going to be perfect at it again? No, that's really not the point of it. The point is that God saves his people from their sins. This is gonna, you're going to hear that one million times if you keep listening to these videos. If you keep watching these videos and listening to the podcast, you're going to hear that one million times. It's all for the glory of God, not for our own. It's for him. So let me continue on. God alone is our witness. And we read this. Um, as Paul would say, God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in telling the good news about his son. So this is the probably the uh, I've seen this and another time in Romans where he makes a distinction of my spirit. It's not to be fused with the Holy Spirit, but in a way it in so much as our spirit now comes from the Holy Spirit. Does that make any sense? Here's the thing. Before you believed and trust in God, before you granted that new heart with those new desires for God, um, you had no spirit. And we're going to, you can go back to Genesis uh, three and you make the, you know, distinction and like, well, God said you would surely die. What some people, some readers may miss is that everything started dying at that moment that sin entered into the world, including Adam and Eve. They, they were supposed to live forever with God, 
but that got broken. And one of the things that got broken is like we we are devoid of that spirit. And we can talk all day long about soul and emotions and will and all you know, what does the mind have to do with this and all that stuff. And that might be a different subject. I might not tackle it into that, but I just know that because you don't have a spirit, you know, when you are born, born of Adam, you don't have a spirit, you're going to perish, you're going to die. Uh, when God gives you life, the part that life is the breathing, the uh, the breathing, the breath of God into you that now you are now fully and truly alive. Um, God uh, makes that equation. Jesus makes that equation and that that analogy with the wind and the Holy Spirit being like the wind. Also, you go back to Genesis again to the beginning in Genesis 2. What God creates Adam and breathes into him life. That's exactly from the get go. It was always supposed to be like that. Now that we have Christ, now that we believe and trust in him and he has sent his spirit to do numerous things un just the end of what the spirit does in new believers is I, I can't begin to mention, but one of, the the chief in the chief of those is sets its mark upon you, adopts you as the son of God, um, also makes you fully alive in him. So um again in Romans eight sixteen, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Okay. So continuing the God alone empowers us for ministry, let's continue in in our passage. That I constantly, Paul constantly mentioned you, always asking in my prayers that if somehow in God's will I may now at last succeed coming to you. Um, and this is the this is I'm going to say this is the point of this because one of the um, there's several several. Passages I can draw from this thing. Oh yeah, God empowers us for ministry. Let me take two from Ephesians. Ephesians 4, starting at verse 11. And he himself gave to some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Don't get caught up in that. Wait for this. This is where everybody's included. To equip the saints for the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ until we reach Uni- all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will no longer be ch- little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way unto him who is the head, Christ. From him, the whole body fitted and knitted together by supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building up itself up in love by the proper working of the individual part. Later on in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 6.10, finally, it's asking right before we get into the armor of God, finally be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. If our strength is not from us, but it comes from the Lord and how much strength does God have? How much might? How much power does God have? The answer is infinite. That's why we call him the almighty God. And it's the same God who has commissioned you and, and has told you and commanded you to go and proclaim his gospel to the ends of the earth, starting with your city. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to do that by his power, not by your own. You just got to be obedient. So let me ask you, uh, faithful uh, listener, where do you see God in the text? And what does the text say about God? From our my conclusions, God is worthy of our praise and thanksgiving. God alone is our witness. And God also empowers us for the ministry. He has given us grace to do his will. Amen. Now, the gospel. The gospel is about his son, Jesus Christ. And we're going to get into, even if you know Romans 1, you know we're about to get there. We're going to get to the specifics of what the gospel is and the power of the gospel. So, continue on what Paul is saying. Whom I serve with my spirit and tell him the good news about his son. Let me see. You weren't talking about, well, okay, I'm called to 
preach the gospel. I'm called to teach, proclaim, tell other other people about the good news. But what is it? Is it just Christ died for us? Well, let's go to what Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 15. For I pass on to you as most important what I also received, that Christ, look, look at what he just said, I pass on to you, now you pass this on to other people, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to over 500 brothers and sisters at one time. Most of them are still alive at the time of the writing, but some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one born at the wrong time, he also appeared to me. That Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried, and he was raised on the third day, according to Scripture. And he didn't do this in secret. He had eye account witnesses of his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and then eventually his ascension into heaven. Let's take a drink break. So, our responsibility. Let me break this down. Let me take, continue the passage, and let, let's see how, where can we draw our responsibility from this passage? For I... For one, for I want very much to see you. Just as Paul is affectionately writing to the church in Rome, here is a reminder of what Christ affectionately says to us. John 13, verse 34. I give you a new command, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. 1 John three sixteen. This is how we have come to know love he laid down his life for us we should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters and remember the passage we said at the very very beginning in first thessalonians 2 a because we loved you so much we are delighted to share with you not only the gospel of god but our lives as well that's our calling we get to love one another we don't get to choose who we love and it's not it's not just other Christians either. We we are here to minister to the world, and we start by proclaiming the gospel. And if you want to throw that uh, misquoted Saint Francis uh, quote at me, like, and uh, preach the gospel and sometimes use words, you know, that's that's not happening. Uh, it, it it's a good notion. It feels really good, but eventually you got to give a defense for the faith, uh, for why. You do the things you do. Why do you do things to do? Because it feels good. It makes you look good. Do you do what? No. I've been told by God to do this. I've been commanded by God. This is this is what I get to do until the until I until He comes and gets me or I'm six feet in the ground. I don't really see it as a choice, in so much as um, I used to not being able to do it, but now I get to do it. Because God's given me his grace to do his will. Continue on. That I constantly mention you, always asking in my prayers, that if someone, somehow, in God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. So, item number two. Responsibility number two. Pray that God will use you for his will. If you, we can talk about, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like try to, Talk down about like seeking out calling or what's a calling? What's my person purpose in life? Hey, listen, man, I have struggled with that for the last 14 years myself. What is my calling and all that stuff? Listen, we're all going to get hung up on that. How about we start with, if you don't know what you've been called to do, if you don't know what gifts God has given you, how to minister, how about just asking, pray that God will use you for his will. Start there. God, what can I do? And let him show you either through his Holy Spirit, through his word, he will He will just show you. He'll give you the opportunity. He goes, what if I mess up on it? Uh, that's not that you're overthinking it at that point. You're, yours is to go and do, not to overthink. 
continue on. For I very much want to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. So number three, pray that God gives you spiritual gifts in hopes to build his church and build up his church. You read 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. Read Romans, I think it's Romans 11. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, start at Romans 11, go 12, 13, 14. I just wrote, wrote about this. Uh, and see, and, and, and why, do, why are we given grace and strength and gifts to do his will? Why are we, why are we, are we to, to make ourselves look better or to create a platform so we can like minister to millions of people and just like ball out control? No, no, none of that. It's to build up his church, to build up one another. Uh, finally to strengthen you, hey, uh, that is to be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. So pray, pray that. Pray that we love one another. We love God and love one another. Pray that he will use you for his will. Pray that God will give you spiritual gifts in hopes to build and build up his church. And pray that you actually build up one another. So here's my prayer. Here's my prayer. This may be different from yours, but I'm going to pray us out. Uh, our great commissioner, you have called on us to obey you, to seek your face, to follow wherever you go, to pick up your cross, to exchange our sin, to for your righteousness to worship no other gods to worship you alone so my god give us christ give us the strength of your spirit to do your will blessed be the glorious name of the lord amen thanks for hanging uh we'll see you on wednesday yeah it's gonna be wednesday five o'clock central 5 p.m central uh tune in we're gonna uh, continue right along i don't want you to miss this it's gonna be uh, the meditation on uh, 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. Man, memorize that. It will change. I th it changed my life, and I think it would change your life. Uh, concentrate on that. Focus on that. Um, go out there. Be blessed. Later.